Now, hey developers, so today we're looking at Vite 2.0. I'm gonna show you guys what it's all about, talk a little bit about the ecosystem, the future of Vite versus Vue CLI, and we're also gonna jump into a quick app, so stay all the way to the end. All right, so if you are new to this, Vite 2.0, as Evan Yu has said, is Vite is the word for fast, and it's a new kind of build tool for front-end web development. Think a pre-configured dev server plus bundler combo, but leaner and faster, and it leverages the browser's native ES module. So it's like a really fast development server that you can use to create not just Vue apps, but React apps, Preact apps, and so much more. So it's really cool platform that I've been using and I wanna to talk to you guys about. With version 2.0, uh, Evan has been adding more and more features to it in the community. Now, like I said, it's framework agnostic. So you don't have to necessarily use uh, Vue.js with it. You can use Vue, React, Preact, Lit Element, uh, for example. They even have this new plugin format so you can start adding plugins to it. So like think of this just as a really neat build tool that you can use to quickly get up and running with these different frameworks. But that also means that it has support for resolvers, URL rebasing and code support and server-side rendering. And if you wanna have more information, if you can go to the YV page on the official documentation, it goes into even more detail of why you may wanna use this build tool. So with that said, I uh, actually have a quick word from our sponsor, so go ahead and take it away. I wanna talk about Tab9 just for a quick moment. If you haven't heard, Tab9 is the way to basically supercharge your auto completions inside your IDE. And what's awesome about it is it supports all modern programming languages. The way it works is you install it in your code editor and anytime you type anything out, it gives you these really great suggestions that you should use. And the way it works is that it's AI powered, it's completely safe, it's running on your local machine so you don't have to worry about your code going in the cloud or anything. It's been trained on a model using over 2 million pages on GitHub, so it has really great auto completion and it supports everything including the Apple Apple Silicon M1 chip. I've been using it for a while in my own projects. You can see here the auto completion is absolutely excellent and what's really nice, you can try it for free. It has a free forever plan. And then if you want it to be work even better, they have a pro plan that is GPU powered. Yeah, so check out tab nine. I'm gonna put a link in the description. They have been awesome. It's, it's an awesome tool. Go ahead and get it. It's absolutely for free. And if you wanna get that pro plan, it's even better. So check it out. The link will be in the description below. All right, I'm back. Uh, tab nine is really awesome. We're gonna be using it a little bit later in this video. So let's, let's keep going. By the way, so here's a few more features of Vite, it's instant server start, lightning fast HMR, rich features, optimized build, and so on and so forth. Uh, I'm just looking at the ecosystem of Vite and seeing all the cool things that are coming out for it. I saw like, for example, Nuxt already has a Vite plugin. So you're probably thinking, how does that work? So essentially what you do is you create your Nuxt app like you normally do through NPX. After the app is scaffolded and created, you can swap out like the build engine so it uses Nuxt Vite. After you do this, it's just super duper fast when you have to do reloads and starting it off. I got it mostly working with everything. It looks like they don't have it working with a composition API. If you guys are really interested in this, leave a comment below. I'll do a video on it and we can try Nuxt out with Vite. That's cool that this has already migrated over to other meta frameworks of Vue. Uh, another really neat thing is this Vite plugin SSR. Definitely have SSR support, server-side rendering support with Vite. And I just saw this the other day. I think Evan, you tweeted it out. It's a Vue framework building server rendered or static sites, but it's built on Vite too, which is built on top of Vite, which helps generate this. So I thought this was kind of neat. It's not production ready yet, but it's another really cool tool. I also saw this one tweeted out it's called Tro Trois. Troy. I don't. So for the French people uh, listening, you guys can pronounce this much better than I. It's basically a, it's a combines 3JS and then it works with Vue.js or Vite. So it's not necessarily Vite specific. You can work you can get it working with Vue.js, any Vue.js 3, even if you're using something like Vue CLI. But I thought this is cool. And you can actually see one of the demos. Here's some examples. I mean, using Vite and 3JS and view, which is really cool. So yeah, check that out. I'll make sure I put a link in the description to all these different things that are happening in the in the Vue ecosystem. Uh, one thing that I heard, I was just watching, if you haven't already checked it out, uh, Vue.js Amsterdam had a really cool uh, conference, but they have some of the videos up for free. And one of them was the state of Vue or the Vue union. I couldn't find the slides, but I did find this one screenshot or I, I brought this, I went to this place in the video. 
So a lot of people are thinking, well, Evan Yu has been talking a lot about Veet as this new build tool for Vue, but what does it fit in when you have Vue CLI already? For the short term, Evan was saying that they will coexist together, which is awesome, but in the long term, he definitely sees some of the features of Veet being added to Vue CLI or Vue CLI being added to Veet, so they might combine at one point, but you can definitely use both of them, either one or or if you're creating Vue 3 apps. I wanted to talk to you guys about trying to get Veet up and running, so let's just jump into an app here. Cool, so I have an app, and by the way, I have Tab 9 Autocomplete. Uh, there will be a link in the description, you guys can check that out. I do have two other plugins that I'd highly recommend if you're using Vite, especially today I was going to try to set up Vite with a Vue 3 app with TypeScript. And the two that you really want to install is something called Vitor, which is the Vue tooling for VS Code. So make sure you install that. And then also Vue DX, which is the advanced TypeScript JavaScript support. Uh, by the way, there's two of them in here. One of them is like a beta version or very, very new and it's not as tested. So I wouldn't use that one. This one right here. I would use the the one that uh, has 11,000 downloads as of, this, as of this recording. There's also another plugin, and this was mentioned in the View Amsterdam. And when you install Vit, you can use something called Volar. It's kind of it doesn't really work well if you're using Vitor and Volar at the same time. Time, so I would choose one or the other. And I have the latest version in Node. If you look at the official documentation for YVT, I can get, go to the Get Starting Guide, and it just says npm init at vjs uh, at vjs slash app. So I'm just gonna copy and paste that in here. Okay, so first thing it asks is a project name. And so we'll just type in YouTube proj. And then this is cool. So this is all the different templates that are available with Vite since this build tool supports more than just Vue.js. So you can do Vue, Vue.ts, React, React.ts, Preact, or Lit. So I'm gonna use Vue and TypeScript. And then it just tells you to go ahead and change directories into it and then do an npm install, and then you can run dev. So let's go and do that real quickly. Cool, so it's up and running. And now I should be able to npm run dev, and it should open up yep, really quickly in port 3000. So if I go to port 3000, here it is. So I have a, a, a Vite app or Vue 3 app up and running. Basically, it's a Vue 3 app, and even tells you, I mentioned those ID setups, so you can do either Vitor or Volar and VS Code, and then I would use uh, also the Vue DX as well and it even has a little sample of how to work how it works so i thought it'd be fun if we could try to get this working with the latest version of vuex vuex4 with typescript so let's let's do that first i need to change folders all right so let's go ahead and install vuex4 and if you look at the official documentation it's pretty easy all you need to do is npm install vuex at next and this will take a moment okay so it's installed all right so let's go ahead and see if we can add typescript in to our app, our Vite app here for Vuex. So it, if you look at the official documentation, it tells you you should probably add in this type definition file. That way when you do this.store, it'll actually show up correctly. So I'm gonna copy this, and in the for source folder, I'm gonna create a new file called vuex.d.typescript. And just for now, I'm gonna copy and paste it inside. And now I need to go in and set up our store. So we're gonna create a really basic store. I'm gonna call it store.typescript. And inside the store.typescript, uh, I'm going to create uh, a few things. So I'm gonna create an export for an interface. And so I'm gonna type this all out and I'll be back with you in one second. Okay, so I went ahead and typed everything out. And so this is a really basic example. In fact, I copied some of it from the official documentation. But essentially this store has a state, it just has a count in it. And then I added in a mutation to mutate it and an action to increment it. And you use in Vuex4, you use this create store, which is a way to create the store inside of it. And then we can also assign it which type it is, type state. And you might see something weird, this key right here. This key is a part of Vuex4. And in the official documentations, they say that it's basically a, an injection key and this injection key has to be added in anytime you import this in for the types to work correctly. So I'll show you how that works. Now we have the store in, so let's make sure that we actually include it when the app loads. So inside the main TypeScript file, we're gonna have to do a little bit of change here. We're going to do, we're gonna do const app here. And then instead of mounting it at this point, we will mount it at some point, but I wanna use this app.use and this app.use is where we can add in third party libraries and things like that. So we're gonna add a store and a key to it, and then we're gonna mount it. And nice thing about TypeScript, I can do control dot, 
and it'll find where it's at, control dot or command dot if you're a Mac, and it should found it. So it found both what's in the key and store. And now we should have this load up correctly and we should be able to access it. So if I go back into my components here, and by the way, see here, here's a bunch of stuff we don't need in this hello world. We do have a message. I'll make sure I delete it all. Oh, don't worry about this ESLint message. And we have this define component. You can see this ling equals ts because we're using TypeScript, but we should be able to import it in inside the setup function since we're using view three. So to do that, we use this const, we'll call it store equals uStore. And then we pass in the key that we created before. And once again, I can do control period here, control dot. I can import it in from view store, control dot, import key from module store. So that works perfect for us. And now we can grab stuff out of it. So let's say I wanted to create a button that does an increment here. And by the way, let me go to my app view. I'm gonna get rid of this logo. So I want to actually have a button that increments. So I'm gonna create a button up here. Press me. And then I'll have a counter here, which I'm gonna have to add. So I'm gonna const and I'm gonna use, we're gonna use increment, which is gonna be a method. And that's going to do store.dispatch, and we're going to do increment. And you can see here we're getting um, we're getting auto completions here, which is awesome. We're also getting a little bit of our tab nine to help us too while we're typing this out, which is awesome. And then if I want to actually grab the counter, I'm going to call it yeah counter. I'm going to use a computed property, and this computed property is store dot state. And then I'm gonna have, you can see here, right here, we have auto completion here with says count. That's from TypeScript. And then computed, I can just hit control dot and we can add computed from declaration to view. So we just went ahead and added it. And now we can pass both these out. So I'm gonna pass counter and increment. And if I did this right, I should add in an event here. So every click it does the increment should work. So let's see if it works. I'm npm run dev and look, it loaded already. It's super duper quick. Here's the app. Here it is. And I'm pressing it. Sweet. So you can see here now I am using my Vuex store and I have types set up. And just to show you a little bit more, uh, we have types on our store. So store dot, you can see here we have store dot state. We are getting our getters and state, everything else that we uh, expect or dispatch and commit our commit. Um, we can see here, here's tab nine telling us how we can commit it in there, which is awesome. We can also, if we're using like the mounted hook, so let's say we are in, we're not using, let's say we're not using view three and we're just using regular view and we're using the data and the methods. If you do this.store, you can see here, we have our getters, our state, and here's our count. Uh, even tab nine even sees it. So our TypeScript's working. Uh, we're able to grab our types from it. Things seem to be working great. So yeah, this is just a quick example of how you may want to use Vite. One thing definitely with Vite is that it doesn't have the plugin system that Vue CLI has. So if you're looking to just quickly add in a bunch of things, you might have to just install them through the NPM system and then configure it yourself. Also out of the box, you're not getting those really cool prompts like you have in Vue CLI where it asks you if you want to install the router, if you want to install some other plugins, you're gonna have to do that all yourself. And you may run into some problems uh, if you don't know how to configure it and Vite is slightly different. But so far I'm pretty impressed with Vite. I'm, I, it's super fast. I definitely think in my next projects, I'll be using it. Let me know in the description below if you think this was useful or helpful through it pretty quickly, but make sure you just pause it and try to understand. And also, yeah, check out our sponsor tab nine. It's absolutely free. If you do buy the more, uh, if you do buy the premium version, it uh, does cost a little bit of money, but it actually has even better autocomplete results. I believe it has like a server that it, it encrypts data and it comes back and it tells you some suggestions for you. Yeah, so check that out. I appreciate it. Thanks.